All right, so this is my Miocene, but I want to bring up my YouTube video to show you the animation again. So as I play this, I want you guys to tell me when you identify um, animation principles. Again, we're talking about squash and stretch, arcs, um, timing and spacing, uh, ease in, ease out, uh, overlapping action, follow through, uh, secondary action, appeal, staging, um, what else, solid drawing. Uh, I know I'm missing a couple in there, but anyways, just thinking about the, the 12 principles of animation. Here we go. All right, so who has some uh, animation principles they identified? And I'll have to admit, you know, this was done in 2006. So this is really old. This is one of my first animations that I've done. I see a lot of flaws. I could have done it a lot better <laughs> if I were to go back through and redo it. There we go. Okay, so. Who, who noticed some animation principles? Can you play it one more time? Yeah. So there's one that I kept hitting over and over with each character. Some squash and stretch in there. Yeah, so he kind of squashes down and he stretches back the, the pawn and the, of course the knight stretches out. So when I, and it's not very well executed, maybe that's part of the problem, but um, as he's uh, lunging forward, Actually, watch the knight as he before he he lunges at him, he anticipates back. He does a big anticipation. And then he lunges forward. And if you watch his jaw, there's a nice arc through there. And then this is follow through. And this guy, you know, kind of squashes and stretches as he lands. He settles down. And this is um this is supposed to be anticipation right here, but if I were to go back through and do it better, I would have him continually, it's called a moving hold. He wouldn't just stay static in that position. He'd be, you know, like swinging a baseball bat. He's coming way over here and then he's going to, I should see a big arc using his head as a, as a club essentially. And he swings it. Actually, that's not that bad of an arc. It's not perfect. I could, I could improve the, the, path of that arc so it's it's uh, more circular and you can see it kind of goes up and down here it should be state pretty even so he misses on the first pass he misses on the second pass and the third time he he actually bumps him with his body instead of his head and that kind of knocks the, the 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 knight off the the board a little bit and the knight kind of shakes it off He's turning into a queen while the knight is distracted. Another thing, another principle that I want to bring up is staging. What, what, what would you guys tell me about the staging so far right here on this scene? Is it staged pretty well for the battle and everything? What do you guys think? You don't, don't be afraid of hurting my feelings because I know that this isn't the greatest animation ever. <laughs> this is my first, one of my first assignments. And that's why I'm showing it to you guys. All right, so staging as far as um, the character silhouettes, you can see that this queen is fairly nicely staged. There's a bit of a tangent here. These characters aren't really important, so I'm not as worried about them. 
but at least this character the silhouette of this knight even though i'm not animating it it's it's staged in a way that um uh is interesting but i have to be careful that it's not drawing attention away from these characters this character especially on this on this part of the animation he's looking for the queen that disappeared but his silhouette is terrible you can't even see his like where his head is so if i go back through back and forth and if this was a light pawn it, it would be a different story but um like here you can see a little bit of negative space between the the the, the muzzle and his chest but as soon as he leans over there his head just disappears but even if this was a white uh, a lighter colored um knight the silhouette is still not really that great i mean if you just take any one of these characters and just uh, hit number seven on your keyboard and you don't see their silhouette then you need to stage them better. Plus he's he, he's kind of has a strange um, touching this pawn. So in fact, the silhouette becomes that pawn. So that's one thing to be, I would, I would re, revisit that. And then here's another big anticipation. And again, he just freezes there. I wouldn't freeze it. I would keep moving it ever so slightly, a moving hold. And then bam, he gets knocked off. And I was trying to, I was, I remember trying to keep the, the knight on a fairly nice arc falling off screen. So there's your arcs. And he settles down, bounces a little bit, looks over the king. And then I make this transition to lower so I can see the king bowing and conceding. Anyways, so, I mean, there's a lot of principles that I was trying to incorporate and I was successful with some of them, not as successful with others. Um, what would you guys have done differently if this was your assignment, if you were, if you had come up with this animation and all this stuff, how, how could we make it better? Well, you guys are quiet today. Randy, what do you think? How can we make this better? You guys are welcome to like type in your the comments foreground. And... What's like that? Right now, like they're kind of blocking the main characters. Who, who's blocking the main characters? Like the two pawns in the foreground. Oh, okay. Let's look at that. So, like right yeah, there's there. a, a knight, a bishop, and a queen. And they're kind of blocking the action, or maybe they're distracting from the main action. Right. So yeah, that's not very well staged. I probably need to move those in a way that they're not so drawing attention so much. And I remember why I put this guy back here. I wanted him to feel threatened from both sides, but um, maybe that wasn't the best choice either, having this guy too close. Because I, I really like the shapes of these knights, but I mean, I, maybe I'm seeing too many of them. There's a knight here, a knight here, a knight here. I wanted to show all the knights because those were the most uh, sculptural pieces. Good. Thanks, Randy. What else? Kaylee, what do you think? How else could we, I have, how else could I improve this? Um, you probably could have done some, I don't know, camera panning to make this whole like, fight seem a little bit more menacing. I don't really know much about animating though <laughs> that's right yeah so i and i don't expect you guys to know a whole bunch but um yeah just some some things that would seem like just as audience members even if you haven't studied animation some things that may not be very clear uh about the cinematography and that's one thing i try to keep it very very simple and i'd recommend the same for you guys you can see this first establishing shot is from above I don't know how well you can read it. This queen is dead. Um, the pawn is mourning her loss. This knight maybe was the, the, the culprit that killed the queen that, that took her off the board. Um, maybe that happens too quickly. How many of you guys caught that at first? I didn't. You didn't, yeah. So I, maybe I need to spend hold that camera longer so that the audience can have time to um, understand 
at least study the, the, this a little bit more. Obviously there are other pieces, but if I'm focusing on this area, this is what's important. So maybe I need to spend more time there. Uh, let's see, Emmett, what do you think? What else could I do to improve this animation? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I really think just sort of easing up the movements more. Uh, yeah, I think that was my yeah, biggest complaint. Go ahead. Yeah, just like easing up the movements, um, things kind of like, I don't know, I'm trying to put it into words. It's not that there's like no weight, but sometimes the things move in ways that look a little unnatural or um, like when uh, the queen just sort of swung, mm -hmm. it was weird for it to take a step while it was swinging. Um, it doesn't have to be weird, but just something about the way it moved, it just sort yeah. of moved over to the square. I forgot that I even did that. Yeah, now that I look at that, I would completely take out that little step back. Like I put that that toe in the front, I step up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would totally but, take that out. Yeah, but like it, it doesn't rotate to like insinuate that it's that it jumped over there. It just sort of like hovered over there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think yeah. just making things look more natural mm -hmm. would benefit it. Yeah, and a lot of that um, is is just putting your putting your um, characters your scene in in some sort of world of physics I mean I have my world of physics but you can see that I haven't resolved it very well where it even though this may not be our our natural world of physics where things fall at 9.8 meters per second free fall um, I, I probably need to time things out a little differently But also one thing I want you guys to think about is how your characters are gonna move. So I, I decided that this pawn, he's, his method of movement is, is hopping. So he hops back and then he swings, but he's hopping essentially. So maybe, maybe that's the mode of transportation for all these guys. They have to hop to get to the, the, the squares. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Maybe they slide, maybe they are, um, slid and they just their their heads drag because they're just being moved by this invisible hand or something but as long as you're consistent with it um i think it'll make more sense to the audience camilla what do you think any other thoughts any last thoughts things that i could do differently to make this a better animation uh, i'm not exactly sure uh I guess for one, I think like uh, with the the thing you mentioned with the horse silhouette, the background might be too dark. I'm not sure if yeah. that was already, but like the- No, no the, one's mentioned that. That's a good point. Too much. Mm -hmm. Especially with the characters, the, the dark characters being so dark, they really do, we lose them back here. You don't, you can't read their silhouettes at all. So yeah, I think I would probably make, I would maybe keep the characters that dark, but make the, the background lighter. I think that's a, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. Good. Any last thoughts, any other ideas? Cause these are all things that you can, I, I want you guys thinking about as you're animating and posing, staging out your characters and eventually getting into lighting. Um, so I've yeah. I'm putting stuff into the comments this whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me check the comments then. I, I didn't even think about that. Comments, chat, there we go. Oh, where are they? Let me stop screen sharing. <laughs> I'll, I'll see them if I stop screen sharing. There we go. All right, so here's some comments. Um, just curious was this story called redemption no i well i called it redemption yeah because the the pawn is redeeming the queen uh oh somebody made a lot of comments let's see like the horse neighing the background pieces everywhere 
are a little distracting, I would suggest making them a bit blurry or something. That's a good idea. I haven't thought of that. Um, blurring out the stuff that's in the background. So they're, they're even maybe the stuff in the foreground too. So whatever it is in focus is, um, is what needs to be, what needs to be, uh, our attention would be on the stuff that's focused. That's a good idea. So playing with uh, the depth of field, maybe. I would suggest having the other nights move too if you want the pond to feel surrounded. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I ran out of time at that point. I think I actually did want one night to attack him from one side and then the other attack him, but I'd never, I never got around to that. If the knight is just standing still the whole time, like he doesn't care that the pond's right there. Yeah, so that's the other danger. If if the knight that's attacking the pond and the pond are alive, they're obviously moving around. Why aren't the other characters, are they, are they completely just, are those the only two characters that have life and the other ones are just plastic? So, yeah. I feel like the board is a bit too bright. Okay, my eyes are drawn to the chessboard and not the characters. Interesting. Uh, maybe maybe I could make the, the board a little bit um, less, I don't know how saturated it is, but I could um, maybe play with the, the texture a little bit so it's not so, and that's kind of the hard thing with the chessboard though. Because there's so much black and white, um, the, the whole concept of a checkerboard or chessboard, um, the contrast is what really draws our eye to it. So that's anyone that's going to be using a chessboard, that's pretty much going to be um, an issue that you'll deal with. Is It's going to draw attention to itself, whether you want it to or not. Uh, maybe put a bit more light on the characters. Yeah, I never really liked the lighting of this. I thought, I, I mean, I, I, I liked where I started going with it, but I don't think I ever got to a decent lighting of these characters. Um, they're kind of hard to see, especially the knight. Yep. Also, I would introduce the king earlier. He kind of just shows up at the end. Yeah, if he's if he's a, the, the main character that ends the game because he concedes, I probably need to have maybe even another shot where we see him, you know, maybe celebrating over the knights, killing the queen or something. And then in the end, the, the king gets his, but that's a good point too. I don't know, I'm being nitpicky. I don't really know too much about animation. These are just my initial thoughts. Yep, just curious. Yeah, so redemption. Good, so thanks for your comments, guys. So um, that's kind of the, the, the method that we're gonna go through with looking at yours. But again, even if you need to like take a little chess piece or just your fingers and thinking about how they're gonna move, um, how they're gonna come to life, how they're gonna transport themselves from left to right or up and down. Are they gonna squash and stretch um, as if they have little springs in them, like little muscles, or are they just gonna slide across the board? And even if they slide across the board, maybe they have some uh, settle down. Maybe they get there and then they kind of wobble back and forth. Just to make it more interesting, If for layout, it's fine to just have the character move very uh, evenly because we're not necessarily looking for principles of animation other than staging. We're really wanting to tell the story. But now at this point where we're really trying to um, build in principles of animation, we need to think about how our characters um, interact with each other. Um, obviously my characters don't have any arms. So he uses, he had to use his head as a, a battering ram, essentially as a, you know, like a mace club or something. But you guys, a lot of you guys have, have put, um, you know, swords or, or battle axes or something near your character. They don't need hands, but it's understood that if they're the, the battling axe is is moving, that means that you know it's there's an implied hand that's holding that. And then of course I have those little we have the little foot controls at the bottom. So um, think of how to use those, um, especially for personality. If a character jumps up, like if you guys have seen the the mushrooms mushroom dance in um, Fantasia, the little feet are the little, they don't have feet. They just have a pod like I do on these characters. And they just kind of wobble up and down a little bit. And it looks like it, it gives the impression of feet. And when they jump up and down there, they're kind of happy and the feet are kind of the, 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 what I made the, as toe controls, they just kind of flip around a little bit. And that, that can really help add to the, the character's personality or if they want to slink, like if they're sneaking, you can use that toe to, to lead the sneak or something. But yeah, these are these are still fairly simple rigs. So, but uh, so they are restricting. Um, but I think we can still. There's a, they're flexible enough that we can get some decent movement out of them. Any last thoughts? 
I got one more chat. Let's see. All right. So yeah, I would also review the uh, the video I sent you guys uh, when we watched um, the 12 principles of animation. That's going to help you guys uh, a lot with uh, figuring out how you want to um, bring life to your characters. All right. 